All right. Welcome back, beautiful people. It is good to be back with you. Today, as you can see, I'm behind the camera and we're going to be talking about a PragerU video. As I have said before, I'm not going to be talking about their politics very much because this is not an overtly, you know, outwardly uh, political channel. It's, it, I'm not even going to do a lot of covert political commentary, you know what I mean? Um, this is not some, you know, secret, ooh, he's inserting, you know, political propaganda into his, um, his videos. No, 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 no. Um, since most things involve politics, um, there might be some videos in which um, certain philosophical or political ideas are discussed um, or examined, but this is not a an explicitly or exclusively political channel. I made that clear from the very beginning. Um, and today, I'm going to be analyzing a video from PragerU that really doesn't have much to do with politics. It's more of a philosophical question that Dennis Prager himself is going to posit to us here. So the question, as you can see on your screen that he presents to us, is are humans more valuable than animals? And this video is particularly interesting because I think Dennis either intentionally or unintentionally he kind of misconstrues terms like, or, or misrepresents what terms like secularism and humanism mean. And he kind of, in so doing that, he kind of misleads a lot of his viewers who may not know these terms. Because the thing about PragerU is it's primarily geared and... If you listen to Dennis Prager or some of the other higher-ups at PragerU, they'll admit this, that they gear these videos toward teens, 20-somethings, and uh, in certain cases, uh, younger kids. Um, they have a whole arm of their organization now dedicated toward like elementary school kids and so they put out videos and books and stuff like that geared toward elementary school kids so um but primarily their videos like this are more intended for high school and college age kids so um so He's kind of misleading his audience in this video, is, is, is what I'm saying. And that is kind of par for the course when you're talking about um, PragerU. But let's just see his arguments here, and I'll explain to you why. Um, again, this has, not, this has very little to do with uh, Dennis Prager's politics personally. You know, this, this is, again, more about his philosophical uh, arguments. Um, again, he weaves politics in there, but just let's let's take a look here for a second, and we'll see what his arguments are, and I'll explain to you why he's um, he's wrong, and he kind of presents a uh, a false dichotomy to his audience. Are you more valuable than a dog, or a cat, or for that matter, a tree? One of the biggest differences between Judeo-Christian values and secular values concerns this very issue okay so there we have that phrase again judeo-christian values so once again i would ask dennis prager exactly what he means by that i, I would actually like to talk to him um he would probably never talk to me because i'm not um big enough <laughs> you know he i'm just some nobody from 
uh, upstate New York, and Dennis Prager is a very uh, successful radio host in California, multimillionaire, you know, and uh, good on him for uh, for that. But um, I don't know exactly what he means when he says that because um, he's going to imply here that or outright say rather that humans are more valuable than animals and what i would say to him is dennis you point this out as a as an example of quote unquote judeo christian values but if you look at um very conservative strains of islam for instance or if you look at very um uh, conservative um, traditions in various religions, not just Islam, but um, beyond that, they're going to agree with you. So it's not just Jews and Christians that agree with that. Um, it, it's various faiths that, that agree with that. So why he's singling out Jews and Christians as being the ones that inherently agree with that, I'm not really... Sure, maybe he's just pandering to his audience, but um, uh, anyway, let's uh, let's move on. Oh, right. Uh, before we move on, though, I want to say secular values. Um, see, the thing is, uh, Dennis, secularism doesn't necessarily mean that you're not religious. You know, there are secular Christians and secular Jews, as you've pointed out yourself, that there can be secular Jews. Um, so that doesn't refute their religiosity. You can be secular and religious. So why you say secular values, again, I'm not really sure what you mean by that or if you really understand what that term means um again you're presenting a false dichotomy here so anyway i'll let you i'll let you speak um let's move on the worth of the human being according to the judeo-christian value system human beings are infinitely valuable unless of course and this is where i'll get um a little bit political unless um they you know, commit serious crimes or unless you can use them as uh, geopolitical pawns, in other words, soldiers, you know, then you don't really care about them, do you, Dennis? They're, they're not precious to you then, you know? I mean, look up, again, you know, look up Dennis Prager's stance on the death penalty, on war, on, you know, you know, stuff like that. So, again, if, if you have those positions, um, that's your right to have those positions. So he can hold those positions. I'm just saying, don't say that you think life is is infinitely precious when you clearly do not. You know, so um, uh, th that's my problem here. You know, so you can be... You know, I don't have an issue if you just come out and say you're pro-war or you're pro-death penalty or you're, um, you know, pro-certain policies, you know, but you can't say at the same time that you think life is infinitely precious when, again, you have philosophical and policy beliefs that clearly contradict that. So, anyway... Continue. On the other hand, secular humanism devalues the worth of humans. As ironic as it may sound, the God-based Judeo-Christian value system renders humans infinitely more valuable than any humanistic value system. That is false. Um, as, as I just said, there are many people who are extremely evangelical uh, religious people who and this is a problem in multiple religions again not just um, uh, so-called Judeo-Christian 
faiths. You know, this is a problem in all strains of of extreme traditional organized religion. Um, on the one hand, you claim that all life is precious and infinitely valuable and blah, 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 blah. But then you support these insane backward policies that don't treat life with any value or dignity whatsoever. And the ironic thing here is the exact opposite of what, of what Dennis is claiming. So in reality here, the secular humanists that he's talking about are more likely to be the ones who support things like um, a safety net for people in poverty, uh, the abolition of capital punishment, um, anti-war stances, you know. So these are the people who um, are actually the ones that are more in favor of those policies, yet Dennis Prager is projecting his own moral failings onto his ideological opponents so the reason is simple if there is no god human beings are only material beings and therefore not worth anything beyond the matter of which they are composed but in the judeo-christian system human beings are created in the image of god meaning that human life is sacred in other words we are either created in the image of carbon atoms and therefore not worth much more than carbon, or we are created in the image of God, and therefore infinitely valuable. But again, you don't believe that. You obviously don't believe that. Stop pretending you believe that. Our secular post-Judeo-Christian society has rendered human beings less significant than at any time in Western history. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back up, back up post-Judeo-Christian society? What are you talking about? Christians are still 70% of the country. I mean, it has dipped in recent years. It used to be, I think, 76% of, of Americans identified as, uh, as Christian. Uh, now it's down to 70%, but still, that's an overwhelming majority. So I don't know what you're talking about. Um, post-Judeo-Christian society. <laughs> Oh boy. And then here there's the term western civilization or western history. Uh god, I I, I love this guy. I love Dennis, man. He he gives me a lot of content uh, or he's going to give me a lot of content in the future cuz I'm going to go after these guys a lot more uh in the future. Um there's already a million channels that go after PragerU for the ridiculous claims that they make, but um I got to do it. I mean, they provide so much entertainment. Uh, and so much content. So um, anyway, continue. First, the secular denial that human beings are created in God's image has led to humans increasingly being equated with animals. That's why over the... Okay. Uh, Dennis, let me explain something to you, okay? Humans, sorry, humans are animals i don't know if you um are aware of that but humans are animals i don't know why you uh, are avoiding that fact maybe because some of your audience uh <laughs> has some interesting ideas about evolution but um we are essentially apes with you know apes with iphones basically so we are animals and some people are intellectually honest enough to admit that but you aren't so um uh i, I think dennis perfectly well knows um that that we are animals so of course we're going to equate ourselves um with uh with animals we're just another species uh of animal and while i um don't agree that we were created directly created by god I, I will concede that i do believe personally that um we that god started the 
evolutionary process that created humans, uh, I don't think we were necessarily created in the image of God directly by um, some sort of uh, interventionist um, being. Again, it's fine if you believe that. I, I'm not judging uh, you uh, for believing that, but there are basic scientific facts here that need to be acknowledged, and the basic fact here is, once again, we are animals, Dennis. That's the point. The course of 30 years of asking high school and college students if they would first try to save their dog or a stranger, two-thirds have always voted against the person. They either don't know what they would do, or they actually vote for the dog many adults now vote similarly okay so now we get to the crux of the video i don't know i can't verify if that's true that that many people voted that way or whatever so like i i can't really prove that one way or the other um i guess i'll concede that that's probably true but um what I would say in that situation is I would say I would I would try to save both. Um, probably not a very possible feat, but I would try my best if I was in that situation uh, to save both. And I don't see what's wrong with that. Um, I don't know. Um, I, I would probably, um, but I, I don't know, I, I guess I would be happy if either one survived, if one is going to die, I guess I would be happy if either one survived, um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't see how this particular question is like, you know, indicative of, <laughs> like, moral degradation or, like, the downfall of Western civilization or whatever he's trying to imply, you know? Why? There are two reasons. One is that, with the denial of the authority of higher values, such as religious teachings, people increasingly make moral decisions on the basis of how they feel. Uh, Dennis, so do you. And so do people of uh, similar persuasions to you. You constantly talk about uh, or, or make decisions and moral judgments based on how you feel. Um, like um, uh, you constantly have appeals to emotion and appeals to authority because authority makes you feel secure. So, um, again, makes you feel secure. So... Um, so again, uh, that, that's feeling, so you are guilty of exactly what you're, you're accusing your opponents, uh, of doing. Now, I'm not saying that the people you're talking about don't do that. I'm just saying you're the last person who should, uh, accuse somebody of going, uh, about looking at the world based on feelings you know you do that all the time with various issues um again you um support the death penalty because it makes you feel a, a sense of justice and um righteousness you support things like endless war because again it makes you feel like oh we're America, we're the good guys, they're the bad guys, and, you know, um, you support, again, uh, an absolutely um, rigid, uh, extreme, conservative interpretation of religion, because, again, it makes you feel superior and secure and... Um, Again, this is all based on feelings, you know. So this is exactly the same thing, again, as another friend of yours, Ben Shapiro. This is exactly what he does. He's like, I, I, I'm uh, uh, f the facts over feelings guy. 
when he's all feelings, you know? So. <sighs> and since just about everybody feels more for their dog than for a stranger, many people simply choose the dog. Uh, citation needed. Do you have proof that people feel more for their animals than for humans? I feel equally uh, for dogs as I feel for humans. I think both should be treated with uh, dignity and respect and reverence and love. So I, I, I don't know of anybody that denigrates the worth of human beings based on uh, oh, I like dogs, so therefore I denigrate the worth of human beings. I, I hear people sometimes on social media joke about how <laughs> about how they, they don't like people um, and they prefer dogs, but I think that's largely joking. Uh, I don't really think that, that that's meant in too serious a manner, so maybe that's what he's talking about, I don't know. But um, I, I just don't see that, again, as too much of a serious problem. The other reason is that once you get rid of Judeo-Christian values, there's no reason for elevating human worth over that of an animal. That's why people estranged from Judeo-Christian values, including many Jews and Christians, support programs such as Holocaust on Your Plate. Holocaust on Your Plate is a campaign developed by the animal rights group People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, PETA, that teaches that there is no difference between the barbecuing of chickens in America and the burning of Jews in the Holocaust. Why? Because a human and a chicken are of equal worth. Okay, so this is the one thing where I guess I'm in slight agreement uh, with with Dennis about that. I don't think you should equate necessarily um, um, inherently um, eating poultry with um, the torturing and the burning of Jews in the Holocaust. And Dennis himself being Jewish, I can understand how he'd be, he'd take a little offense at that. So I, I get that. Um, and, you know, PETA sometimes can go a little bit overboard with their, um, their messaging and their uh, tactics. Um, but the point is, I, I think what, what they're getting at, uh, PETA, is... A lot of times, what you're seeing now with factory farming and things like that is you have all these animals packed together and in these completely unsafe and unsanitary conditions. And, you know, they, 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 the reason why they got to pump all these guys with all, all these animals with, uh, with, antibiotics is because again they're, they're totally unsanitary conditions um not good for the animals um absolutely brutal conditions and you know there there, there is kind of a a mass slaughter uh of these animals and they're not treated with dignity and respect so there are some parallels um, to the Holocaust. Um, I don't think saying things like Holocaust on your plate is a very effective uh, strategy. Because, again, I can understand why, why Dennis would be a little bit um, turned off by that. You know, I, I get it. But at the same time, I don't think... I think deep down he knows that there are some parallels. So there is kind of a, a grain of truth uh, in what uh, what PETA was trying to say there. Um, and as far as, uh, you know, equating uh, chickens with humans, uh, again, I think humans uh, and chickens are fairly equal because, again, we are animals too, 
And I don't really, again, I don't really see that as a problematic viewpoint that we are of equal worth. I, I don't really see that as a uh, problematic viewpoint because I view all life as, uh, as sacred, um, except maybe, um, <laughs> maybe worms or certain types of ants or something. But <laughs> anyway, um, continue bees i don't like bees um uh but i i will admit we do need bees we need a lot of bees <laughs> um or else uh this world would not be uh very pleasant at all so um but as long as the bees stay away from me i'm good so anyway so too in a notorious tucson arizona case a woman screamed to firefighters that her three babies were in the burning house Thinking that the woman's children were trapped inside, the firefighters risked their lives to save the woman's three cats. If you think these two examples... Okay, so I actually never caught that one second there where the fireman slaps the woman. Oh, that that's great. That That's, that's wonderful, Dennis. Depict um, a, uh, a fireman slapping uh an old lady that's that's wonderful because he has to sign off on all this stuff you know so that that's wonderful very moral of you uh uh dennis um now is it a tiny bit silly to refer to your cats as your babies without clarifying that they're pets yes but again, I don't see this as an inherent problem. <laughs> you know, again, she probably should have clarified that, hey, they're my pets and they're valuable to me. Um, but if your house is burning, you're probably not going to carefully think out what you're going to say, <laughs> you know, because you got to react quickly. Um, and if something's that important to you, you're probably going to say something like, oh, you know, these are my babies and you got to save them and whatever. So um, I can understand kind of both sides where they're coming from here. But I would not recommend, uh, Dennis, if you're, if you're trying to claim the moral high ground here, I, I would not recommend uh, depicting a fireman slapping an old lady. Not a good look, my friend. Not a good look. Samples are either just theoretical the dog stranger question, or extreme, the Tucson mother of cats. That is an extreme example. Here's an issue that is neither theoretical nor extreme. More and more people believe, as PETA does, that even if it would lead to a cure for cancer or AIDS, it would be wrong to experiment on animals. Yeah, um, it is. I think in a lot of cases, yes, it is. Um, maybe if um, the animals are... Well, here, I'll, I'll make a compromise with you, Dennis. If the animals are, let's say, dying, um, and, and it's clear that they're on their way out, maybe... Um, maybe you you'd have a point you know maybe you could do some uh experimentation but if they're perfectly healthy and they're in the wild or something and you're just going to capture them for you know using them as lab rats essentially no that's not okay you know um and again you're using cancer to appeal to people's emotions uh rather than uh, relying, again, on facts and data and things like that. Um, so, again, you're doing the thing that you're accusing your ideological opponents of doing. So, In fact, many animal rights advocates believe that even to save a human life, it would be wrong to kill a pig to obtain a heart valve. If it was perfectly healthy... Yes, it would be wrong to do that. Um, like I said, again, if maybe the pig was dying 
or you know had some sort of illness that was terminal okay then, then come and talk to me then then you maybe you'd have a point but if you're talking about um if you're talking about I lost my train of thought. It, oh, um, but if you're talking about a pig that's perfectly healthy and you're just basically torturing an animal, no, I'm not for that at all. That's that's just ridiculous. And I think that that's kind of what Dennis is implying here. That ooh, let's just you know torture animals. I I, I don't know. Um, now maybe I'm strawmanning. I don't know. But uh, anyway. The 20th century showed vividly what happens to human worth when Judeo-Christian values are abandoned. Nazi Germany and the various communist regimes all rejected Judeo-Christian values and ended up slaughtering the largest number of people in human history. This is absolutely false. Absolutely false. So, um, well, not absolutely false, but... In terms of Nazi Germany, no. Um, Soviet Union was more complicated, and uh, China as well. Uh, but Nazi Germany, no. Uh, in fact, on the Nazi belt buckles, it said, Gott mit uns, God is with us. And Hitler was raised Catholic, and uh, he, he kind of flip-flop constantly back and forth because he was not the most stable individual as we all know um in terms of his religiosity but he did have um periods in his life where he did have a strong connection with christianity and used his christianity to justify what he was doing. He also used German mysticism and mythology and things like that. But he did use um, Christianity to uh, to justify uh, what he was doing. Um, and uh, so so it's not true that um, Nazi Germany rejected Judeo-Christian values. Well, the Judeo part, yes. But um, the Christian part, no. Um the the, uh, uh, the Nazis did not reject uh, Christian uh, values at all. Um, they were very, very uh, connected uh, with them. Again, they incorporated German mysticism and Norse mythology and stuff like that, or, or uh, Germanic mythology. But um, uh, but Christianity was a component of that uh, of Nazi ideology uh in terms of like the soviet union and Ma maoist china and things like that um it was pretty much a uh, sort of state enforced atheistic uh society in both uh countries but at the same time it kind of there was kind of an uneasy relationship between church and state in those countries because at certain periods uh particularly in the soviet union the uh, Russian Orthodox Church was actually kind of, sort of, allowed to um, operate. I believe Lenin kind of did. Uh, Stalin did not. <laughs> um, uh, and then later on, uh, in the post-Stalin era, uh, the, the, the Russian Orthodox Church was given some uh, level of permission to operate. <laughs> um so it's kind of uh, so he's making it a lot more black and white than it actually is. This was my point. For Nazism, Jews and members of other non Aryan groups were declared worthless and murdered in the millions. For communists, human worth was determined solely by communist parties, which murdered tens of millions of people. Only by rejecting Judeo Christian values. Could Nazis declare Jews, Slavs, and others subhuman? And only by rejecting Judeo-Christian values could communist regimes slaughter those they called class enemies. In okay. Um, like I said, 
Um, let's let's go back a second. So, as I said, the uh, yeah. So Stalin, Mao, Lenin, uh, they rejected so-called Judeo-Christian values. I'll, I'll admit that. Um, but it, it is an absolute lie to say that Hitler or any of his henchmen did. That's absolutely false. Um, so, yeah, that, that's really all I have to say uh, to that. As they called class enemies, individual human life meant nothing. Meanwhile, human slavery was abolished only in the Judeo-Christian world. False. Um, did you guys know, uh, this is actually a fact that I learned fairly recently because it's not taught um, in our schools. Gee, I wonder why. Um, that one of the first, well, actually, um, it was partially done away with um, slavery in India under Ashoka, I think that that was, uh, uh, he, he was a king in India a long time ago, and uh, I think uh, the second century or something like that. I'm getting my history wrong, but um, I'm certainly a lot closer than PragerU is. Uh, anyway, the point is, um, the uh, the Qing Dynasty in China was the first to like the first society in the world to have a mass abolition uh, of slavery. So they did it way before, way before uh, anybody did it in the Western or Judeo-Christian world. And Haiti, Haiti abolished it in 1804, way before anybody else, again, way before, uh, you know, any of the, the Western people did. Uh, way, they did it a few decades before uh, Britain and France did it. Um, they did it before, of course, before we did it. So th absolutely false. Absolutely false. And of course, for nearly all those who reject Judeo-Christian values, the human fetus is worthless, if its mother deems it so. Okay. Okay. So, the, the, on the abortion thing, it's funny how people like Dennis Prager will go on and on about, oh my God, we want to protect babies because all life is precious and blah, 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 and the, and the fetuses and the babies and blah, 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 blah. But then, once the baby is born, again, they will do nothing to help that baby, nothing to care for it, you know. So, again, they don't want any safety nets. They don't, they, they you know... People like Dennis Prager will do anything they can to propagandize these people into becoming servants of the state, you know, v you know, via the military or police or whatever, you know. So um, it's just unbelievable, you know. And and you know, being and you know, my point is again, being a soldier or being a police officer, these are incredibly dangerous professions, obviously. <laughs> So it's like, you don't care about these people's lives. Shut up. You know, you don't care about the sanctity of life. <laughs> it's just amazing hypocrisy. Finally, there is an increasingly vocal part of the environmentalist movement that also denigrates human worth. For these individuals, the human being is not infinitely precious. Trees and rivers and mountains are. So... Are you more valuable than a dog or a cat or a tree? That depends on your value system. I'm Dennis Prager. But wait a second, Dennis. Why can't, again, why can't it be that you're equal to, uh, 
equal value in those things, you know? Why, why, why can't it be that? I don't get it. I honestly don't get it. Why he presents that as a dichotomy. Well, you're either, um, you're either worth more or less than one thing or another. It's like, why does that have to be a thing? Why can't it be of equal value? And, uh, he says in earlier in the video, he says that even them being equal is a bad thing. Well, which is it? What, what do you want? You know, um, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Uh, but, oy vey. Um, oh, the environmental thing. Uh, so it's interesting. Just uh, one quick note uh, before I sign off here. Um, Prager U, the interesting thing about them, well, there's several interesting things about them, but one of the more interesting things about Prager U is their primary f funders um, are brothers, not the Koch brothers, but very similar, uh, the Wilkes brothers. And the Wilkes brothers are fracking billionaires so of course you know almost every video they do has to have some jab at environmentalists so it's it's interesting how he kind of works that in there at the last minute <laughs> so anyway um uh that's pretty much all i've got so i will see you guys next time maybe i'll do another prager you video who knows um but anyway it's uh Thanks for sticking it out for me, uh, with me. I'm sorry. Thanks for sticking it out with me. Uh, I appreciate it, and I will see you guys next time.